the Beacon Clinic was a, a vision of Dr. David and Dr. Janet Kim to bring a holistic approach to reaching people for Christ. I guess chapter one really would have to start back in 1993 um, when I graduated from Columbia. I think I always knew I was gonna be a part of some type of startup for medical clinics. Um, this is even going back to as my college days. People were saying, hey, you know, there isn't a, a health center or, or even any medical services in our area. I was interested in the health center for the people of Manus Harbor. Our uh, hospitals are, you know, anywhere by St. Vincent's, which is maybe uh, three, three miles away. Prior to the health center opening, my mother was going to Staten Island Hospital to their clinic. It's two buses to get there. It's like a two hour ride and then like most clinics, if you're 15 minutes late, you got to reschedule. There were two sort of groups of facts that really sort of stood out. The diabetes rate, the obesity rate, the, the heart disease rate, the, the general mortality rate, the asthma rate in kids, the lack of immunizations in kids. And while we were appalled by the statistics, it wasn't necessarily a surprise because there was no permanent comprehensive healthcare presence in the area. But the other thing that really made us realize that this was really an area that, that God was calling us to was the fact that there was also a very palpable lack of spiritual interest in the community. Not that people weren't interested in religion, but that they had been let down in some way, shape, or form by religion. The secretary of the church that uh, our Dr. Kim goes to, uh, Dr. Kim went to her and says, who can I get in Manners Harbor that knows people that could get things done? And he described to her putting this health center up. She said, there's only one fellow you gotta go to, and that's Vinnie Pompa. And we started to talk about having a health center in Manners Harbor. Well, I happen to know the owner of this building. The recommendation was that we get our site. So at 2079 Forest Avenue, we got this empty warehouse. But we were also told, you're not allowed to touch that place to renovate it until you've gotten approval. But until we could officially open in our downstairs warehouse space, we had this temporary private practice space, which was above the post office. My role at Beacon was to help at the desk with patients. I um, served as the first nurse. I was the receptionist. First of all, we were upstairs, so you were kind of disconnected from the street traffic. You really didn't know who was coming in the door. If we had a need, we'd pray about it, and the Lord just through one of us would seem to supply that need. We were sincere to what we were doing. It was in, in our hearts and our being, you know, in this community that there was, there was and is still so much poverty and, and pain and, and neglect, and especially medically. Everybody would be uh, coming up the stairs to see us that first, you know, year or so, and they'd be just like, Dr. Kim, you know, it's really good to see you, but those 17 <laughs> steps. In the short two years that it took for us to get out everything renovated and fully opened, we started off with uh, close to 2,000 patients in those two years. Uh, a verse that, that has sort of taken on a life of its own over the years for me has been Jeremiah 29.7, you know, uh, which says to seek the peace, or in Hebrew, the shalom of the city that has enslaved you, and to pray for it, for in its success you will have success. Now with the recognition and knowledge of Jesus Christ and, and, and his presence in the world, you know, it, it takes on a whole new meaning to say, okay, we are really being Christ to the community. Simply by being who we are, serving people, being, you know, the good Samaritan. In order for us to open, it required an administrative um, application. Um, it was a pretty extensive application in and of itself. It required some consultants to help us put that together. You know, once we started to ask around, uh, we received a tremendous amount of opposition, not from the community, but from other uh, political forces within the city and, and beyond that basically were like, oh, well, you know, we, we're going to start something. You can join us if you like. Uh, and you won't be able to practice your faith or do anything, but you can join us. Our prayer has been, God, you need to demonstrate yourself. If nothing else, to show that you care about us, you care about this community, but you're also caring about your glory. 
we actually got our Article 28 uh, certification as a not-for-profit health center in New York State. I remember one specific conversation I had with one of the uh, high-ups in the Department of Health because they had called asking us questions since we were the first uh, faith-based health center to officially apply for Article 28 uh, uh, certification. And the guy starts to ask me questions like, well, do you guys do exorcisms? Um, do you use holy water? Do you immerse people in water or something? Uh, he had no idea how faith and medicine could interact to provide a positive influence on the community. And so after explaining it to him, he said, wow, I never knew faith and medicine could be a positive cofactor with each other. And so it was an interesting conversation, but that was probably the breakthrough. I remember how much we prayed. And I remember one day being in, in the car, David was giving me a ride. I said, David, we're going to get a bit Lydia. Do you know how big the enemy is? Do you know how much political pressure we have? I said, but God is bigger and this is going to happen. And that happened. And in a year, we became a federal qualified. And that was another wonderful thing that happened. The first time I knew that like the community really accepted us, we just shut down for the night. Um, at 11.30 that evening, I get a phone call from one of the patients. I call him back, and I'm like, hi, Mr. So-and-so, you know, what, what's going on? He goes, oh, doc, I just want to, I'm, I'm fine, there's nothing wrong with me, but I just want to let you know that there was some, some weird guys hanging out in front of your door, and I, I honked my horn, and I shone my lights on them, and they ran away, Dr. Tim, but it's okay. <laughs> they didn't break nothing, and everything, everything's all right. You know, it's all, it's all good, Dr. Tim, it's all good. And I was like, man, I, I think we're legit now. You know, the community's got our back. been growing steadily and we are seeing more and more patients too and I'm glad that many new staff members are joining us. I've been coming here for about five years now and uh, it's a great place they really take care of you. Their financial status does not come into a play when I treat patients so I think in that way I am showing them that Christ doesn't discriminate against class, race, money. Well, I was actually a patient. Um, it was actually a situation where my child did not have health insurance, and this place actually offered me services without having health insurance. I went to residency at Montefiore Hospital up in the Bronx and wanted to do urban medicine my whole life. So really was looking for a community that was diverse and had a need for doctors who were willing to take care of complicated patients who have issues with insurance and other things like that. And also as a Christian, Health Center. Um, it was great to have to be at a place where we are free to be able to address the spiritual needs of patients. My whole family comes here. My husband, my children, my stepchildren. I have family that come to that comes to visit this this health center, and they recommended me here. They love this place. <laughs> like the kids come here. You know, everybody has their doctor here, and they tell me it's all good here. With the Spanish-speaking patients, there's actually, um, it's very hard for them to find places to go that they speak just their, their language. Sometimes even with filling out forms, there's places where they don't have it in Spanish and here we offer that to them. They always ask me if we have other staff that speak Spanish and we do. I'm able to practice medicine. I have to say, what insurance do you have? Can you afford this? Can you pay for it? What pills can I give you that will help you and that you'll actually go and get? and make sure that somebody follows up, can't just assume. After a while, you do feel like you're making a difference. We've been able to start prenatal care over the last two years and uh, more recently over the last few months, and that's been very rewarding just because we have the opportunity to um, diagnose pregnancy, see them through the beginning of pregnancy, throughout the pregnancy, and now to deliver our patients and to see their babies as our newborn patients. So. Um, you know, that's what family practice is about. It's what we enjoy to be able to take care of the needs of the whole family. They're dedicated people, which I think the people see it. And this is one of the reasons why the, uh, our clientele has grown, because they're dedicated. Yes, the size has increased, but because we now have more help, I can still um, provide them with the same level of care, now with other people by my side helping me. They're human. That's, what, that's what's nice. It's not a matter of getting the money. It's a matter of healing them. And once they heal, they become friendly with the doctors. And it's great that they know so many people by their first name. Every step of the way, 
we would pray and seek God's direction and keep doing what we know we do best, which is doing good quality care, caring for patients, being there for them. Our goal has to continue to be to seek the peace of the community, to seek the peace of the city that we're in, and to continue to, to seek the good uh, you know, for the community's sake. I would love for us to get a time of reading corner for the, for, for the kids, so our parents can come in and they can get their well check done while we keep our, um, our, the kids entertained. I'd love for us to be able to broaden our care to include uh, more, even more of the holistic aspects like nutrition, exercise, um, just being able to maybe have a health educator, those type of things. We have built up a clientele so much that this place is getting small. And uh, I'm after, after the doctors uh, to increase the things here like uh, taking x-rays, having a dentist uh, and, uh, and things like that where people don't have to go too far away to have things done. But a lot of Christian doctors, a lot of Christian nurses, a lot of Christian MAs and PAs and RNs are, are going to want to work for this clinic. And if we do a good job, then we can go in other boroughs because they desperately need us. Every year I see that you are blossoming and growing bigger and bigger, which is a beautiful thing and I'm very thankful for that. There's just so many wonderful things here and I hope you stay forever.